Hey there, this is John of Podbean and Podcasting Smarter. Today I'll be interviewing Danny Hager of Inspiring Teachers and the Hager History Podcast. Danny and I talk about incorporating podcasts into your classrooms and schools, as well as the positive impact that podcasting has on student learning and engagement. Enjoy this episode of Podcasting Smarter, and thanks again to Danny Hager. Welcome to Podcasting Smarter, the podcast for and by podcasters. We interview podcasters for the real scoop on podcasting. Whether you're thinking about starting a podcast or have been podcasting for years, you'll find lots of inspiration, valuable lessons, and tips in our interviews. This podcast is brought to you by Podbean. Please visit podbean.com, the home for podcasters. So Danny, thank you so much for making the time to chat with us. How are you today? I'm doing great, John. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to talk with you today. Absolutely. And you're over there on the West Coast there. I'm sure the weather there is nice. Oh, yeah. We're in like the, the mid-70s today. It's been a nice stretch. We're kind of out of the heat. I feel like fall is really here now. Cats jumping in the lap to cuddle, so you know it's a sign that cold weather's here, you know? Because in the summer, it's like, do I have a cat? Like, I don't see her most of the time. So tell us a little bit about you. Tell us a little bit about what brought you to podcasting, your teaching experience. Yeah, what's really cool is that uh, I've had a relationship now with Podbean for over a decade, starting back when I was the general manager of Titan Radio at Cal State Fullerton, which is a, the second biggest university in California. I'm a California kid, born and raised. I've been writing music for a decade, and I've been podcasting since my college radio days. So I started out in like the comedy sketch writing, because everyone in college thinks they're so funny. <laughs> and uh, that was a fun time. And started posting episodes and encouraging other students to podcast. And we were kind of among the early adopters of the medium, posting shows from other DJs that were also students. And so it was always tied into the sense of education. I was a radio TV film major. So shout out to Cal State Fullerton there. And I just love the idea of like keeping these episodes archived for posterity and for creation. And the comedy turned more towards sports. And I did play by play for Cal State Fullerton, a little bit of UCLA, Golden West College, did some TV, then worked for the Los Angeles Angels for about five years and did some podcasting there down in Anaheim. So it's been part of everything I've done. And you asked about, you know, my focus now. I would say that the inspiring teachers focus is about spotlighting the why of education and keeping teachers uh, aware of all the great work that teachers are doing across the nation and kind of getting everybody electrified and avoiding that teacher burnout by sharing ideas and concepts. But I also have the Danny Hogger music podcast and I've done a free song every week on Podbean for five or six years and producing free music now going back 10 years. That's kind of like my free creation for the world thing where I make it here. I'm actually putting together a drum set right now so that I can uh, incorporate even more instrumentation into those songs. And I release a free al uh, an album out, out each year out of those. And then I have the Hogger History Podcast, which is my in-class podcast for review, for notes, for student recaps, going into assessments. So yeah, absolutely, man. It, it's been a focus on education. It's been on music. It's been on sharing. It's been on giving gifts to the world, basically. And I want to thank Podbean because They've been rock steady by me the, this whole time, so I've never thought about going to a different venue. They've they really supported my creativity. That's awesome. And I like how you have so many avenues that you're able to explore. Like you said, you're able to bring it into the classroom, you're able to bring it with inspiring teachers, and then you're also able to bring your music. Now that you did say about that you have a drum set in there, are you yeah. an electric drum or an acoustic drum? Yeah, I can't do elect acoustic drums because I've got a baby now, so I can't <laughs> make the noise. And plus I'm learning, so whatever noise I make is not really desirable at this point. So I've got my guitars and I always have been writing songs myself, original music and dannyhogger.com and on iTunes and Pandora and Podme. But uh, I have never really been able to put drum tracks to it that weren't super computer robot robotic. So I'm going to try to do it myself and should I try to be an all-in-one DIY shop here? And then I take the best songs from the year and then I put them on iTunes and Amazon at the end of the year based on um, like feedback and download counts and what people seem to like. So let's talk a little bit about Inspiring Teachers first. Mm -hmm. It's a podcast that looks to bring inspiring stories from the classroom to your podcast. Uh, tell us a little bit about how your podcast got started for Inspiring Teachers. To me, it's an interesting podcast because you're not just talking about a specific topic. What you're doing is you're looking to bring the stories of other teachers and other educational facilities to other educators so that they can continue to do the great work that they do. Yeah, that's right, John. Thanks for asking about it. So we started, my friend Tavis and I, he's also a teacher in the East Bay here. He's a woodshop teacher. I'm teaching high school history. And we are always talking teaching. Our wives are both educators as well. 
And I asked him one day, well, why aren't we recording these conversations? You know, we're talking about this so often. And I bet other people would find a lot of common ground here. And what we started with the two of us became inviting people at our school. And then it became inviting nationwide acclaimed educators and award winners and authors and exploring this why of teaching. Why do we do this where uh, there are so many other careers that we have come from and could have chosen and could also engage in? And it became a study of why teachers teach, what they want students to learn from them besides just the lessons of the classroom, and why it is that we all share in this community, which is now more connected than ever with social media and the internet, where we're not isolated islands anymore. The ideas that we share and develop can become classroom changing across the nation and possibly around the world. So we've had some really fantastic guests, over 50 in a year now. And it's been a really cool study of how many really passionate, good-hearted people there are out there that are choosing to teach as a profession. Now, what are some of the most inspiring stories you've been able to share from teachers through the podcast? I'm sure you have just a myriad of different stories you could share. Yeah, there are a lot. And I would invite people who are listening to, to check out our episodes and our videos as well at the Inspiring Teacher Show with Danny Hogger and Tavis Beam. Michelle Ferre is one of our first episodes. She's probably three or four. She runs a channel called Pocket Full of Primary and maybe is one of the most successful social media teachers out there. She's an elementary school teacher, but has millions of people watching her videos and her content weekly. And it's amazing to see the things that she does, the hours in the day that seems like she has twice what the rest of us have to create all of these wonderful activities, these engagements, this organization in her classroom, these charts, homemade handcrafted items, and then still balances the life with like cooking and cleaning and going to the gym. And she's kind of become like a lifestyle brand in herself. And when I viewed that from afar, you know, some of us have a skepticism and we see characters like that, that like this can't be reality. But and how nice and genuine she was as a person when we talked to her, that was the moment I knew this podcast wasn't going to stop very soon because there's amazing, amazing people out there who like her are doing fantastic work. We also had Lily Hevish, who's like the lead domino creation expert in the world. We had her on, even though she's not a classroom teacher, to talk about self-discipline, seeing projects through, having creativity drive you, like a lot of things that teachers could adopt. She's the number one domino artist in the world. She did Jimmy Fallon's like 30 million subscriber, or whatever the number was, and has done things on national TV. And we've talked to uh, Dave Burgess from Teach Like a Pirate, whose book has kind of like lit up the teaching world in different ways, some authors like that, that from all across the country now seem to really like the idea of sharing stories and being a part of this, uh, this, this positive community, because that's really what we're about is shedding positive light on educators. And have you seen a pretty strong effect from having a podcast that highlights teacher success stories? One of the effects that I see is that I thought it would be something with so many projects that I'm taking on at the same time that might be draining. But Tavis and I always say after we finish, like we feel more energized than when we started because it's just good people sharing good ideas and that makes you feel energized. That's an effect that I've heard from everyone that's been on our show when we cut the recording session and we talk after they're like, that was fun or that, that felt good. Like, this is really cool what you guys are doing. There's other teaching podcasts, but I don't think that uh, our, our focus is so kind of unilaterally pure about just getting excited about what we're doing and sharing each other's backgrounds because our stories are so important. Like you said, your background in music, I'm sure informs a lot of what you do at your work as well. So it's kind of what I think of as an archive that people might look back at in 50 or 100 years and, and take a look at some of the leading educators of this time. And I kind of feel like that's part of the effect. You're talking about a pool of teachers and educators from, I'm sure, all walks of life, from all walks of uh, subject matter. And I'm sure even somebody from one subject matter can have a specific style that can translate into something else. You're not only inspiring teachers to continue doing the great work, but in turn, you're also inspiring hundreds and hundreds of students. Yeah, I think that's true. I would love to see a model of rotation of teachers at some point, even if it's for a day or a week. I always try to do that when I was at a private school and like say, hey, let's all swap classrooms for a day because it's good for students. It's good for us. And I always pick up ideas from people who are guests. I'm always reaching for a pen and paper. Like I got to get that down right now because I might like to do that tomorrow in my room. So that openness makes us all better if we're all sharing those good ideas we become improved from the process. 
Absolutely. And now we're talking about the Inspiring Teachers podcast, but you also have the Hager History podcast, which features history topics for your review, study, and learning about historical subjects. Yeah. How do you use Hager History in your teaching of social studies? For sure. So my students and I will sit together on microphones in the classroom, which is a phenomenal way to back up the sense of bringing learning home by teaching. It's a wonderful way to reinforce your own learning. When they find out they have to come record with me, they come in prepared. They're not going to want to walk in and stutter on the microphone. So it's a great way to practice like oral communication skills. I generally will do this before every unit test and I'll sit down. I talk pretty quick. I don't know if that's becoming apparent, but uh, I talk really fast and I know like there's no chance that you're going to catch everything I said. So if I sit down for seven to 10 minutes, recap what was key before an assessment, I did my master's research on this very subject and found that students score 8% better when I provided a podcast as opposed to when I didn't. And they go home and they listen to it. Uh, It's not homework. It's not required. But they know that it helps. And I can see that it helps now because I've conducted the data based on four assessments with compared to four without. And I did a video on that as I was vlogging for San Diego Christian College. So if anyone wants to see that, it's available. But it's kind of fun. Like sometimes it's a game show. Sometimes it's just review notes. And then sometimes I'll have them come on and speak about subjects that are interesting to them. This next quarter, I'd really like to invite them to do like a change your mind project where they have to write a persuasive speech about a historical subject or current event and try to convince students to agree with them. We did it for the first time non-recorded because I wanted to see how it ran. It was heartwarming. Man, the things that people come up with and really matter to students, it's really, really uh, passionate and very cool. And I'd like to do that. I'm just going to find a way to bring that into a podcast medium and maybe select a few of them, maybe offer extra credit. I, I just think it's really great that they're creating the content that is the most engaging, I feel like, in the classroom. So the podcast, I want that to be a reflection of that coming soon. That's awesome. So you've definitely seen effects from the podcasting on a student's ability to learn and uh, internalize the information. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Whether they're listening or creating, it's a dynamic thing that not everybody is doing, but I have a feeling one day a lot more teachers will be doing it because there's just rewards from, from scoring on assessments to The students who connect with it, they might be opening up career paths for themselves where no matter what career they they become, if they can be the marketing arm of their organization, they'll increase their value to that organization too. So that's one of the things I'm pretty excited about that I'm offering in the classroom. Now, do you feel that a lot of students are excited to hit the record button or do you still feel like you kind of have to draw them out of their shell a little bit? But once they are they get super engaged with the recording side of it too. Yeah, I find that in my my classroom, and I sense it might be the same across the nation, there are more students maybe with with more vocal about anxiety issues than there used to be. And not everybody is willing to do that. So I'm at the point where I'm not forcing, but inviting. And then I think when they see other people or when they hear other students' episodes, like, oh, that sounded like fun. Or, oh, what an advantage that they got to sit with the teacher and talk about the test beforehand. They're seeing... A sparkle of like, oh, I see why that would be good, or I see why these are good skills. And I tell them stories in the classroom all the time. I feel like transparency is pretty critical about how I wasn't a very vocal student, and I think it held me back, you know. And I think through middle and high school, I could have had more friends, been more social, launched a little bit further out of high school if I had been more confident at that point. And I'm giving you the chance to develop that confidence in a low risk environment where there's no pressure and we can edit if we need to. So, all of those things. I think make it a pretty intriguing invitation and I hope that that will bring more people in. And every year I get more comfortable with it, the more ideas that I have on how I can implement them, whether it becomes something that we publish on the podcast at hoggerhistory.podbean.com or whether it's something we just use in class, depending on how they feel and the sensitivities of those issues. I think it's, it's all growing and it's going in the right direction and I'm excited. I hopefully will be getting more equipment soon that I could be using in the room too. Now that's actually something I wanted to highlight next. It looks like the podcast is available for any podcaster to listen to, not just yeah. exclusively your students. Right. Uh, what's been the feedback from potential educators and students outside of your class? You're actually sharing content from your classroom, but it seems like you're including the students pretty heavily in it. Yeah, it's kind of interesting that there are students listening in different countries and wasn't what I was intended, but I'm thrilled that that's a byproduct of this. I've had emails from students in New Jersey and in different states in the country asking to produce different episodes because I think they may have a test coming up or something that they're focusing on, or they asked me to do like AP review guides. And it's kind of flattering. It's pretty cool. And I'm glad that other people are engaging. I'm all for it. I don't see any problem with having an extra resource. And it shows to me 
that students are seeking out this kind of information. And YouTube can be great, but it also is filled with like poor quality content as well as good quality content. And while I'm no professor, you know, I don't have my doctorate yet. I do find that like for the middle high school level, like I am locked into like the summarizing that I think is a value to them for key subjects. So I'm glad that I could serve just a little niche and I'm sure popularity is kind of medium low on, on that particular podcast and it's geared towards my students. But it is cool to see hundreds and even thousands of people on the annual side uh, listening in. It, it makes us feel good. And I think my students like knowing too that they're getting listened to by some other people. I'm sure it probably makes them feel like their input matters. It and does. even from a young age, integration of that can't be understated, especially as a teacher. You can do so much. You can't understate that. Not at all. Yeah. Do you feel like Hager history has had an effect on teachers in your school also, or even on the, uh, the school itself? Like, do you feel like they're let's say is a little bit more buy-in from your school to have more people do podcasting or is it very much like you're doing it for your students right now and you're hoping that more teachers start taking advantage of such an awesome tool? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both columns there. Our school, we have 2,700 high schoolers, so about 120 teachers. And I'm not trying to jump out on top of the radar with everything that I'm doing because it may feel, make some people feel like they're being not as effective. Also, some people, there's a little resentment because there's a certain amount of hours in the day and they don't want to be encouraged maybe to go above and beyond when they're at home. And that's fine. I mean, everybody's level of commitment for any type of job is different. On the other hand, I do uh, occasionally get made fun of for like, oh, is this not being recorded right now? Or are you doing a promo right now for your show? Are you doing commercials? I introduce people and sometimes I slide a coaster or a business card out there. (laughs) Um, And that's fun. And I play into that because why not? You know. The whole thing about it for me is enjoyment. And my background's in broadcasting. Ultimately, I came to a point where I didn't want to do radio full time anymore, but this keeps me engaged in it. And that's kind of the cool part. I'm having fun. And as long as people, some people are listening and enjoying it, and uh, our Twitter following is growing pretty heavily um, at Show Teachers and at Hogger History, then that's telling me that like, it's worthwhile. And even if my students are the ones that are getting the benefit, well, that's my whole job as a teacher. And plus, uh, on the side, when you meet with parents, and you can say that, like, as a teacher, I'm doing this, and it's available all the time, and any student can listen to it to get review, that's scoring such major points with them and with the community, knowing that, like, you really are trying to get students to succeed, and you're doing this one extra thing. That's not the reason I do it, but it does feel good to know that that's there if you ever need to mention it, and it's a good support. Now, how do you feel that podcasting has helped you in your teaching methods? Because we've talked a lot about you know, integrating the students in the recording. And, you know, I'm sure before podcasting was something that was in your, let's say your window, you probably had a very different or not very different, but you might've had a little bit more of a different teaching style to, let's say, disseminate that information to your students. But do you feel that podcasting has helped or changed at all your teaching method? Yeah, I think a couple of different ways. One is now I plan on recording a review before every test. That makes me better because if I'm re-engaging with the content and not just reprinting a test from a previous year, I'm more aware of what's on it. I can do a better job teaching towards it. I can also think about how my instruction in class, what you know what moments are effective when you lock in on a student and all the eyes around the room are with you. You're like, oh, this right, what I'm saying right now is doing a good job. Let's use that in the podcast. So between the recording process informing the teaching, the teachings were informing the recording process. And then with inspiring teachers, I am literally gaining knowledge from other instructors and about ways that they go about it. I especially love having history teachers on because I feel like they're uh, right in my wheelhouse and they've got ideas that I could directly benefit from. So the one other way that it's helped me is it informed my master's thesis, which was about how podcasting affects scoring on assessments. And also I ended up writing this book, which was completely blind and foreign to me as an idea until I did it last fall break. It's called The Broadcaster Secrets to Teaching, and it's available on Amazon and Kindle. It's also available on Amped Up Learning. I think it's on Teachers Pay Teachers as well. I'm sure it is. And it's about engaging classrooms and presenting your program. So I took the ideas from my broadcasting background. I wrote down exactly how they've changed my teaching and what ways and what activities that teachers can do, even without a podcast. And I put them all into this book and I'm hearing from people that that's been really helpful 
because you're coming at teaching now from an audience in formation and education perspective where you're a host and like, would you ever tune out of your own teaching because it's become boring? So that's the way to answer your question. A broadcaster secrets to teaching is basically all the ways in which doing this podcast exercise, having a classroom podcast, interviewing teachers. And I put the best of like the first 25 episodes and notes in there about how these people inspire me. So that's a pretty awesome resource. And I, I had never done anything like that before. And it's not like a New York Times bestseller or anything, but among the teaching community, I feel like anyone who teaches would really enjoy that. That's something I would love to ask you to share with us because I, you know, especially with us putting out this podcasting smarter episode, yeah. you know, the highlight of this one is to really inspire educators and teachers to mm -hmm think a little bit more outside the box and think of new ways to integrate podcasting. And it would be really great to be able to have them see that resource. What advice can you give to educators for integrating podcasting into the classroom? Yeah, I would say don't get daunted by any of the barriers. Get one microphone, you know, if, you, if that's what you can bring, if that's what you can afford, do that. If you can't afford a microphone, grab your cell phone, put it on a table, invite a couple students. Um, if you're worried about security, if you're worried about privacy, change names, don't mention your location, you know, keep it anonymous and just practice and go to Podbean and sign up for a free membership because it's a great way to give it a shot. You might be surprised by the results and the rewards. It doesn't take much. You can even grab free audio editing program like audacity and do all that work for free too. And there's videos on YouTube to guide you. So you can do this for no cost or you can do this for a couple hundred dollars and it's uh, it's very enriching, can be used by any subject, and you might end up sharing an idea that makes another teacher better too. So that's that's pretty awesome. And I like how you said that there's so many different price points too, because you can have somebody who doesn't want to put, like you said, a couple hundred dollars into it, but yeah. just with a little bit of investment, even using tools that they already have, you have the ability then to create something powerful right in your pocket, basically. Right. It's pretty so cool. Please, the floor is yours to promote anything that you have coming up, um, any of the podcasts that you have. I'd love to give you the floor just to be able to tell everyone where we can find you. Thank you so much for doing that. And thanks for this forum to, to plug because the tricky part with there being so many people out there now is, is getting above the noise floor is tricky. So I'm very grateful for your time. So if you want to find me and everything I'm doing, you can start at dannyhogger.com because it has links to my music, to my podcast, to my videos. On YouTube, Danny Hogger as well. It's H-A-U-G-E-R. On iTunes and Pandora now, Spotify, you can search for Danny Hogger Music. My newest album this year was Two Sides, and I'm working on an album called All at Once that'll be out in January of 2020. Pretty thrilled about that. I got 40 songs right now on dannyhogger.podbean.com from this year and over 500 songs in total. So if you like acoustic and alternative music, that's a great place to do it. Inspiring Teachers records new interviews every single week with amazing educators. And that's inspiringteachers.podbean.com at showteachers on Twitter. And then finally, the Hogger History Podcast for anyone who's studying social studies out there is hoggerhistory.podbean.com. That is an awful lot. And what's crazy is there's more, but we'll, we'll leave it at that. And I'm just very grateful for any new supporters and fans out there who are followers. If somebody's got a good heart for doing things for free for people and producing content, and hope that an audience might catch on to that. Well, Danny, thank you for all the work that you do. And thank you for your time for Podcasting Smarter. Thanks, John. Appreciate your advice, your input, and uh, the chance to talk with you. It was great. Appreciate that. Thanks for joining us for Podcasting Smarter. You can check our show notes at podcast.podbean.com for links and details. Please like our podcast, leave your comments, and help us spread the word to other podcasters so we can bring you more great episodes with podcasting tips and inspiration from fellow podcasters. If you want to connect with other podcasters or get interviewed on this podcast, please join our Podcasting Smarter Facebook group. We look forward to welcoming you to the community. Happy podcasting!